Hello friends. Good morning, good evening, good afternoon and welcome back to my channel. So as I committed, let's start with the new learning. So continuation with the Kappel scripting today, I'm going to talk to you on the panel designing. So here also we will use some fundamentals of the Kappel programming. So it's a very interesting topic. So let's start with this. So today we will see how you can design a panel using vector canalizer as well as the can OE tool. So panel designing, but before jumping to the panel designing, I gonna take you through these different topics. So we'll start with the introduction. What is panel designing? How you can start with that? What are the prerequisites? Here we will talk about the software requirements. What is the general requirement when you go for the panel designing? Then I'll talk on working windows. Then we will see about a panel toolbox. Uh, then what is system variable? How you can generate the system variable? What is the use of that variable that I will cover inside the system variable? Then how to create the panel? We'll start with the creating the panel and I will take you through adding the event handler. That is very important, how you can add the event handler, whatever the system variables you have created, how you can use this uh, while designing the panel. And then we'll see uh, what is the panel designer browser? What are the different working windows? What is it meant for? What are their properties? What is their layouts, settings, and why it is used for? Then as I always follow that, once I cover the theory, I'll take you through the live examples where, where we will program something and I will show you how uh, this panel is designed using the Kappel scripting uh, inside the canalizer or Kanoi tool. So let's start with this. In the introduction, um, so just see a brief introduction about this panel designer. So you can see you can use the panel designer to create the graphic panel on which the values of the symbols can be modified and displayed interactively by the user during simulation. As the working area has been designed to work on the basis of tabs, multiple panels can be opened simultaneously in parallel. During the panel design, a symbol from the database must be assigned to each display and control. The panels are saved in XVVP extended vector panel format and can subsequently loaded in can OE and canalizer configuration. So this is the extension. Once you design the panel and save, the file is saved in the .xvp format. So this is just a brief introduction. Now let's see what are the general requirements when you start designing the panel. So first requirement is, this is not about the software requirement. I am talking about the general requirement. So first, if you are designing the panel, you must have the canalizer tool with the version of 7.0 or higher. Below that, you cannot design the panel. So this is the first requirement from the software side. The second one is very important that you must have the valid license to run the simulation. Whatever the license you are using in your hardware or you in your software, you must have the valid license. If you don't have the license, you cannot design uh, the panel. That's very important. And the third important is panel works in the online mode only. If you are designing the panel, if you have designed the panel in the online mode, and if you are going to the offline, if you have the offline um, can logs, and if you use the offline mode, and pull the can logs and running the can messages, still you cannot uh, design the panel. You cannot work on that. So you must be online. You should have a valid valid license. That's drive license, or I would say um, a canalizer license. And you must have the canalizer version 7.0 and higher. So these are the requirements when you go for designing the panel. So next C, before jumping to um, understand how you design, it is very important to understand what are the different working windows. If you start working, you should know what are the different windows or what are different areas. So first window is a working area where actually you works. So panels are configured in the working area. Whatever the panel you design, 
you have to configure that panels into the working area. So every time a new panel is opened and then tab appears, this means that the multiple panels can be edited in parallel. So as I said in previous, you can have the multiple panels open and you can edit that and work on that. So and this is how it looks. If you see here, this is first panel, this is a second panel, and this is a third panel. So you have a parallel instance, instances are open for uh, the panels. And here I'm working this as this is an active window. So next working window is a symbol explorer. What is uh, this symbol explorer window and why it is used? All available symbols are shown in the symbol explorer. If you are working on the signal, if you are working on the can messages, if you are working on the system variable, everything is visible in the symbol explorer window. So all available symbols are shown in the symbol explorer window. And this is again a very important working window. The next is very important that they can be assigned to an open panel using the drag and drop. Simply you can drag and drop to the a working area and you can assign uh, the specific symbol to the specific um, uh, specific uh, the panel uh, property. So this is what uh, the symbol explorer window. And this is how it looks like. You can see the database signals. You can see the messages. You can see your system variables. Everything you can see and you just drag and drop and assign to a specific um, your uh, specific property or the specific tab or specific trial or specific meter or whatever you are working in your panel designer. The next working window is a panel overview. So how the panel overview looks and what are the different properties? The panel overview of the panel designer lists the control which are integrated into the current selected panel. So this shows you uh, it's controls or overview actually in the tabular overview you can uh, see quickly identify which symbols are assigned to which control assign symbols to the controls okay and find controls which are hidden or located outside the panel so these are possible with the help of the tabular overview and this is how it looks this is the panel overview. OK, so next working window is a toolbox and it is very important. OK, so toolbox, uh, all available controls are displayed in the toolbox. If you want to work on the LEDs, that's you can see there. If you want to work on the slider, you can see that radio button, switch, everything is available inside this toolbox. All available controls, input as well as output, everything is displayed in the toolbox. They can be assigned to an open panel using the drag and drop or by double clicking on it. So very simple, you have to just double click or just drag and drop to the working area and assign specific signal. And this is how it looks. So here you see the analog gauge button, couple output view. Uh, this is how the toolbox looks and I will cover this in more detail about uh, the this uh, toolbox in the next um, couple of minutes. The next uh, working window is a properties. That is also important. Wherever you work, you should know the properties of that uh, specific toolbox. So property window lists all the settings associated with the currently selected control. If you are working with um, slider, if you are working with the button, you should know all setting associated with that control, right? When setting is selected, a brief description of it appears at the bottom of the property window. You can see a brief introduction or the brief description about that control. And this is how it looks. So this is a background color, the style, the font you used. Everything is possible to look inside the property window. And this property win window is all about the controls which you are using to design your panel. Next working window is output window. So in the output window, messages on the currently active panel are displayed in the output window. Example, if you controls are not linked with the existing symbol, uh, you can see uh, its information and the message are displayed 
in the output window. And this is how it displays the message. Uh, it, it tells you that it is not connected to anyone or it is not attached. That way it displays the message. So this is how output window is used. As I said earlier, the toolbox is very important. And here I'm gonna track on the toolbox. So panel designer toolbox um, display all the controls. Okay, whatever all controls are available, it displays everything. And based on your need, you have to work on that. Drag and drop and start working on that. Controls can be assigned to an open panel directly. That is very important. Whatever the controls you want to work on, you can be that, that can be assigned directly. Okay. What are the ways to connect it? By drag and drop. You just drag it, pull it, and drop into the working area. By double clicking on the that and by let, left clicking on the required uh, control and select it. That's all. This is how uh, you can use the control or configure the control. And these are the all controls. You see, you can use the pointer, analog gauge. You can use the button. You can use the clinometer. You can use the compass, LED band, LED control, LCD control. You can use meter. You design your meter, change its properties, background color, the settings, the limits, what is the minimum band, maximum band. Font, everything is possible. You can even use the picture box. All these controls are accessible and you can use for designing your user interface using uh, this panel designer. So this is very important to understand what are uh, the limits of the toolbox? What are the different um, toolboxes are available to design your panel? So I have listed all the toolboxes which are available. With the help of this toolbox, you can design your panel. So till now I have covered the theory. What are the working windows? Brief introduction about this um, panel designer, uh, different uh, uh, properties, and we also talked on the toolbox. Now let's start jump into designing the panel. But before jumping to designing panel, it is very important. We should start with the system variable. So what is system variable? And let's see here how we can create the system variable. I'm going to cover the theory and then we will jump to the practical. But if you want to um, do parallelly, even you can open uh, the canonizer tool and just follow the steps. I which I'm going to explain here. So initially you need to create the variable system variable, but what are the system variable? System variables are defined under the tab environment or the system variables. So it can be assessed everywhere in a canalizer or a canary configuration. We define user where to a shared root data around the testing environment between test nodes, simulated nodes and measurement nodes inside the canalizer and canoe panel. Purpose of the system variables are used to display system information. So whatever the system information you want to display, you have to have this system variables defined. So how you can create the system variable? Just go to the environment uh, in your canalizer option then go to the system variable. Simply just go to the system variable, click on that and enter the name of the namespace variable, whatever the data type you want to work on, set that data type and just hit uh, the OK button. That's it. Then you have created your system variable. OK, um, so this is how it looks. Uh, actually, the, this window looks like the system where here you comes here. You just right click on this um, variable and this window appears where you put down the namespace. Then you put the name of that your system variable. You select the data type and you also select the minimum maximum range and hit the OK button. That's all. This is how you can create the system variable which interact with your um, controls. So this is very important. The next uh, uh, we'll talk about uh, creating the panel. So how you can create the panel? Very simple. You just have to go to open the panel designer on the vector tool 
and then create a new panel. Just hit on the new panel, get the track bar and drop it on the panel frame. That's it, it's very simple. And then drag the system variables into the environment data and uh, drop it on the track bar. And this is how it looks like. So this is how you start with creating the panel. If you don't want to work on uh, the system variable, you can directly work on the database signals. That is also um, possible. And next is adding an event handler. How you can add the event handler? Very simple, I'm explaining the method here. You just have to click on the view, go to the measurement setup window, and then you just add the program node in the send branch. You know the transmit branch in the canalizer. Uh, the cano. Here, here is the transmit branch, right? Uh, so I'm talking about the canalizer. You just have to right click on the hotspot and insert the program node. So here you have to insert the program node and write down the capital scripting where you can access the system level, do the programming, do the methods, apply the methods, whatever the program you want to do. And accordingly, you create the message, access to it and uh, write the capital scripting and save it, compile it, or remove the errors and just start your measurement. So as soon as you start sending the message, uh, you just have to vary uh, your uh, desired value and you can see that live into the uh, your can message. So just imagine that I have created the system variable. I have assigned to this uh, panel. As soon as I slide this uh, here in that message, the value will change. I will cover everything into the live demo. So before jumping to the live demo, let's talk about the panel designer browser, how it looks. If you open the vector panel designer, this is how it window looks like. So what are the different working windows I just covered, but let's talk um, very briefly about the panel designer browser. This is how it looks. So this is symbol explorer browser tree here. All the symbols, your frames, data um, can, uh, mess frames, signals, system variables, everything can be seen here. You can browse it, explore it, drag and drop to this working area. The next window is a panel overview. Here you can see the overview about the panel and this is a working area. Here actually you have to work. You have to design your uh, user interface or the panel. This is the area. From this toolbox, you just drag and drop here and start working on that. So this is a output window where you can get the message. If you are dragging any of the control here and not connecting to anywhere, here you can get the message or something gets, goes wrong, you can get the warning here. So this is how the output window uh, is here. And uh, the toolbox, as I said, this is very important. Um, if you want to work on the analog gauge, you have to hit on this drag and drop here, set the properties, everything. And this is the property window here you can. Uh, look for the properties, change the properties, the limits, color, background colors, and everything can be done uh, with that specific control. And then we'll go for the live example. Now, what I want to do uh, here on the live example, I wanted to show you how you can simply, how you can use the control in terms of the input and output. So what I will do, I will use a simple button. If you hit that button, we will glow one LED. If you release the button, the LED will go up. So here you will get the exposure on the system variable. How the system variable plays very important role when you are dealing with the controls. That's the panel designer controls. You cannot work without your um, system variables. That's very important. So I will take you, take you through that. The second very simple, example I'll take you where I will create one message or I will take the live message from the CAN network. I will use that message and assign to the dis, uh, display or any of the meter. So if you have any network and if you just want to see that message, that uh, example will definitely help you how you can use the live message to read from a specific signals from the CAN message and display on uh, panel designer. And the third is, so this is still now we have seen that uh, we are creating the system variables and um, then assigning the specific um, symbols or assigning to the specific control, reading it, 
then you are reading the can messages as well as I'll take you through to writing the can messages. If you have a can message into your network and you want to modify that with the help of the panel designer, uh, taking the good example of suppose uh, you are running with uh, um, any of the can message that can message is talking about uh, the vehicle information like uh, ignition state or the cranking state. If you change uh, uh, that state or the throttle uh, position. Let's say you press the throttle and the, as soon as you press the throttle, um, the value of the tr throttle percentage should be reflected into the CAN message. So you are writing over the CAN message also you, with the help of uh, this panel designer. I will cover that. Simply interaction you, with the help of system variable, reading the CAN message as well as writing the CAN message. Once I cover these three, I will open the door for you so that you can go ahead and go for very complex examples, very complex um, panel designing and everything. But these are three three areas, three uh, major uh, areas where you have to understand how you can start with. But before that, I will also make you aware about the panel customization, how you can customize the panel when you go for the working area, how you can change the background color and what are the different properties, very simple. In very simple language, I will make you aware of that. And then using the system variables, we will just um, create one simple two system variables like uh, for the button and for the LED light. If you hit uh, the button, we will glow the LED. So using that system variables or use case of system variable will get covered. Then use of the CAN signals uh, with the help of this analog gauge, I will show you. Uh, I will read the CAN messages from the network and um, then I uh, will uh, uh, display that on this analog gauge. And the last area where I'll talk about uh, use of the system variables uh, in a capital within the real-time CAN message. That means with the help of system variable, you will uh, modify the specific CAN messages into the network. As I said, the best example of the throttle you just vary the throttle position and that according to that tr throttle position, the CAN message into the network should get modified. So let's um, go now into the live demo in the practical session. So I'm in the canalizer window. Okay, here is my, um, I'm into the, uh, home. If I come here, I will go to the measurement setup. I just have set my, I will remove this. Not required. Yes, I will remove this. Okay. So this is how my working window. I have set the ball rate in which network I have to work. I'm working on the find rate. You can change based on your need or wherever you are working. As I said earlier, you just have to right click on the hotspot and insert the program node and you have to write the programming over there. But why programming is required? This is required to access your system variables and interact with your controls. This is our next step, but before that, this configuration is very important. But first step you have to follow, you have to add the database file. If you are working on the channel one, just hit on the channel one and add your respective database files to the specific channel. If you will not assign any database file, you will not access uh, the CAN frame or you will not access the signal where you want to work on. So initially you add the database file, go to the measurement setup, set the baud rate and start working on this. First step is, the first example we are going to see is about um, use of system variables. So as I said, go to the environment. Just follow uh, me step by step. Go to the environment and go to the system variable. If I hit on the system variable, this window appears. To save the time, I have already created the variable, but I will show you how you can create the variable. Just right click on this in the blank space, hit on the new, put down the name of the variable. Then put on the comments. If you want to understand what this variable is mean for, write down and then select the data types and you no need to do anything here and um, you just hit okay. 
Now, I don't want to create because I already have created. Now, why I have created three, I will explain one by one. First one is what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna create one button. If I press that button, I want to see, uh, or I want to glow the LED. So that's what this lamp output and the power switch, these two are required. Why the slider, I will cover. This slider is for, uh, as an uh, throttle position, uh, I want to show you, that's what. So let's start with this. Initially, I created the power button, okay. So how I created this? You see that I left the namespace open. You can create the namespace. If you are dealing with the electric vehicle, you can see EV. Or if you are working on the battery related, you can put down the battery. Or if you are working on the vehicle dynamics, you can put the namespace vehicle or something like that. But I kept this open. If you put the vehicle namespace here, while working on this programming, uh, uh, capital programming and access this uh, system variable, you need to use the double colon. And to avoid that, I am not uh, using uh, the namespace here. I'm just directly starting with the names. So power switch is the name I given uh, to the button. Then I have set the initial value as zero. You just double click on this and you can set the initial value, uh, minimum value and the maximum value. As this is a button, I just want to work on the two values, zero and one. That's what I said. Zero is a minimum, one is a maximum. And I, I just, I will hit on the okay. Similarly, I have created right click new and I have created this lamp output. So if I edit this, I will show you the lamp output. You can put any name, whatever. If you want to just say LED, you can say LED. And uh, then I have set the minimum value, maximum value and set the data type. You just drop down here and you see the different data types are there. So as zero and one Boolean will suffice the purpose, but I don't see the Boolean data type here. So that's what I use uh, integer. Any of uh, will suffice my purpose. So I will just click on hit here. I will cover the slider next because we are just handling use cases of the system variable. I will hit, I'll just apply, apply here and click on the okay. Now your system variables are created. If you have created the system variable, that system variable will be accessible inside your program. Uh, no, so right click insert program. I already have created the program node. And let's open that program node. Very simple. What you have to do, this is how it will look. Very simple. Now don't look at this now uh, up to this message. This is very important for you. And I have my previous program also, but uh, we don't have the use case now for that program. So I'm not showing here. And I have covered uh, that session in my previous um session uh, for the beginning of the capital uh, programming that is there actually so what you have to do now you have to create one can message but where you have to create the can message on system variable where you can get the system variable variable uh, you just have to come here and uh, you can find uh, the system variables here below the value object. Drag this and draw here, okay? Uh, even you can just go here and type, like let me on sys variable. So if you see, if I just write it in space bar, it shows whatever the system variables I have created. These are the uh, by default features of uh, canalizer are already available like canalizer, but uh, if you see here, uh, lamp out, power switch and slider, these are, I, I have already created, and I have shown you the lamp output and power switch. So what do we have to do? Just try to understand here. We have to read the switch position, right? So what I gonna do, I will write down on system variable on this power, and on power, what I'm doing, I'm defining one can message. Okay, I have defined the can message. Uh, this is an identifier and this is the name of the message. You know the syntax of the can message and I have covered very well into my previous session. Here I'm in defining the length. That's a data length code. I'm just sending the one byte. I'm sending this message on of channel one and we have to use uh, this syntax on the, I'm sending just one byte. So on the first byte, what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna read this power switch position. And this is the syntax which you have to use at the rate is. What 
uh, is this. Actually, within an event procedure for receiving a can object or environment variable, the data structure of the object is designed or designated by the keyword, and that keyword is a this. Okay, so with the help of uh, this key uh, keyword, uh, you can receive uh, the can object as well as the environment variable. So you have to write this uh, command and output means you are sending that message. That's it. So that's very simple. I'm just uh, uh, sending this message. Um, so this is done. Up till now, I guess it is clear. Just follow me, type this message, pause my video, uh, type this message, create the message, and uh, whatever the system variable you have created, it already, uh, as I said, uh, if I write on sys uh, variable, um, it uh, shows, just I press the space bar and it clearly shows your, so there is no chance to um, doing something wrong in the spelling mistake or something, okay? So I just created one message. Now what I'm gonna do, once you hit the button power switch, this message will go into the network, okay? What I have to do, if that switch position is zero, right? What I'm gonna do, I'm gonna write the lamp output. That means the LED, I will set the value zero. If I release, I will set the value one. But when I say zero, what should happen? When I say one, what should happen? that will come into the panel designer. What I'll do, when it is zero, that means I will assign the red color, and when it is one, I will assign, sorry, I will assign uh, the green color. You can change the color, but when you press the button, uh, that means you will get the one value or a can message on the first byte. If you release uh, the power switch button, uh, you will get uh, the zero value on this can message on the first byte. That also I will show you, okay? So till now it is clear how to use the system variable. Now let's link this system variable. So this is our second step. In the first step, we have created the system variable. We have defined the minimum maximum um, values for that. We have defined the data type, just apply everything, hit on okay. Then we jump to the canalizer in the transmit branch. We have um, added the program node in the program node on system variable, we have called that system variable, send one message, and inside that message, what I gonna do? I gonna just uh, write the programming that if I press the button, that means I am sending this zero, and I if I release the button, uh, or I am pressing the button, that means I am sending one. If I releasing the button, I am sending zero. So this is clear now. So let's go to the designer now. Okay, so again, I will go back to the canalizer window. I will come here to the home, then the panel. I already have created the panel. Let's go to the new panel. Okay, so this is how my panel will look like. I already have customized. And in my live example, that was my first point. I'll go cover the panel customization. This is the by default um, background, but if I double click on this, I'm clicking on the other end. If I double click on this, if I come to the properties, you see the background. So earlier it was white. You can change that, right? It was white. You can change the size. I can change the size as well. So I'm changing the background to the black. Then I have pulled this. This is very beautiful feature of uh, the panel designer. If you come to the toolbox, here is the start stop control. If you add this, you don't need to run your program. You just have to hit on the start, the program will start. If you stop, program will stop. So this is very beautiful. So you can just, what you have to do, you just have to come here, drag and drop, that's it. I already have dragged it. Now, as I said, we have created one system variable for switch. So I will come here, and uh, where is the switch button? So here is the switch. Uh, here is the switch button, right? The button. You can pull that, drag it, drop it this way, right? And if I double click on this and go to the properties, I change the name. 
So you see here, um, inside the property, uh, okay. This is how the black color for the border and the transparent. And then if you see the text, I put down the power switch. I will just put down the space bar here. So, and if you see here, the space, space bar is came here. You can change the font size. Everything is possible. Um, so text and everything. Very important is that once you set the properties, how it should appear, what is the font, what are the general properties, layout, where you want that and everything. If I just change this, uh, so layout will accordingly change. So the, this step is very important. And that step is called, you have to come to the symbol. And if you drop down here, you see here the variable is there. I have selected the variable and then what you have to do, you have to come here and this window will open. And here it will show your system variable. So what is your system variable now? My system variable is a power switch. Okay, so I will apply. Okay, so power switch. Um, it's assigned here, okay. I mean, it is assigned uh, to this. So same for uh, this um, lamp. For this, you see the power switch is assigned. For the lamp, uh, this lamp out is assigned. So again, you have to come here for the variable and assign uh, that specific button or the specific uh, property. Okay, uh, so where this LED is taken from, if I come to the toolbox, here is the LED. Right, radio button is there, progress bar is there, and the LED is there. I can come here, double click on this, the property. I can change the color. Uh, I can set the initial value. Everything is possible, or the colors and the properties. As I said here, the initial signal, then you have to go for the variable and then double click on this here and assign the variable, which variable you want to assign. So accordingly, I have done for this, um, and this LED. Okay. So if you see the opt state is zero, that is red. And the on state, I change the color and I said this one. Okay. So once this is done, you have to save this. And what do you have to do? You have to go back to the your canalizer. Okay. So here I now. So I will come here. Then again I'll go to the panel and I'll go to the here. Okay, so this is how my panel looks. And if you see this black I set, and here are the buttons. If I hit on this, you see here, your messages are alive. That means you have started your program. No need to go here and hit here, right? If I stop here, and if I run here, the same thing is happening. So in the user repair, Interface only, you can have the control. You can start the measurement, you can stop the measurement. So I have just hit here and start the measurement. So start the measurement. Now let's see, if I press this button, this LED will should turn green, right? This is what we have written the program. Yes, I have hit on this and LED turned green, right? Also, ch let's check. Uh, we have customized the message and that message was 200, right? So this is the message. If you see, the byte one because I said the DLC one in the program. So if I press this, it is turning one and LED also turning, right? So that means as soon as I press, the scan message is coming live. As soon as I release, this message stops there and also change the states in the signal in the byte zero. So this is how you can use the system variables and you can interact with the can messages and uh, do your uh, panel designing, whatever you need. Here also in the graphics panel, you just have to, I will stop this. You can just right click. Here you can add the signal if you have the signal from your can message or you can, you see here uh, in the system variable, add system variables, click on that and it will show you uh, in the symbol selection, what are the system variables you have defined, right? So I have defined the lamp output, power switch, 
whatever you want to say you just select that OK and uh, let me change this. Uh, add the system variable, so I will this power switch. OK, I will remove this. So I added the two. OK, and if I run this here, uh, the two are overlapped here, but if I change the position, release the switch, stop it, and if I fit all the signal here also, you can see that. Let me run it again. Switch it on, switch it off, switch it on, switch it off, stop, fit all signals. You see on and off, on and off. So lamp output is on. As soon as you press the button, that's how you can use your graphics window also to see your system variables. So graphics window can be used to see the system variables, your signals, you can see everything. So I have covered the first point. Now let's jump for the next point. So the next was your um, reading the CAN signal directly, right? This is how designing the system variables and interacting uh, with the message and making your panel as per your need. I'll come here and I'll go to my um, panel where I was editing, okay? So here I was editing. Now I already have created, so what I will do, I will just copy this, uh, but I will tell you how I have created that. So I'll just paste it here, you see here. So this is a uh, display. So you just come to the toolbox, and here you can see uh, the analog gauge, right? Here I came, I double clicked on this. In the property, I changed everything. Instead of this millivolt, I set the vehicle speed. I'll just show you uh, instead of writing everything, but I will show you how you can. If I just click hit, you see here speed. So that way I have designed this. You can change the minimum value, maximum value, uh, the color, that everything is done here. You see here the vehicle speed I typed here, the scale I set, the minimum uh, value, and everything I have set, the background color and font and everything. And then what I will do, very important, that's the symbol. Here I don't want to work on the variables. I want to work on reading the actual message. So instead of variable, what I have done, I hit on the signal and I have selected the signal from my database file. And that signal was actually the vehicle speed and that already I selected here. So if you want to read any um, any of your interested signal, you have to bring specific control here and assign that. Very simple, very, very simple. Come to the signal, uh, apply the symbol filter to the signal and click here and then add the specific signal from the database file. This is also done. So let's save this. And again, what I need to do, I need to go back to the canalizer. I will go to the canalizer and here again, you see, as soon as you save, it shows here. So hit on this, you see my vehicle can message, uh, vehicle information, it is reading the vehicle speed from that here, you see the vehicle speed is changing and according the vehicle speed is. So you can even set the minimum uh, range then over speed range, colors, everything is possible. You just explore that into the properties of uh, this uh, dial. Uh, it's very easy, very simple. So very simple with the help of the available CAN messages, with the help of the toolbox, you can just drag, drag and drop the toolbox, set the general properties, set the appearance, select the range, select the font, text, and just go to, um, uh, to the variable or the signal, assign it uh, from the database file and run your um, configuration. That's it, very simple. So I'm just stopping and let's cover the last point where instead of reading the CAN messages, let's modify the real-time CAN message. If you have a specific CAN message into the network with the help of uh, this panel designer, how you can interact with the real-time message, okay? Here also we are reading the real-time message, but um, it, it was for just available into the network. I have just assigned uh, to it and I'm just reading. But now what I have to do, I have to interact with the CAN messages, right? So that means what I need to do, I need to write the CAPL programming as well as I need to write down 
the system variable. What I will do, I will initially, the first step is write down the system variable. So I will come here again to the environment, system variable, and here I have created. What I wanted to show you, the slider is acting as a throttle. If you slide from zero to 100%, it will show you how that value is getting reflected into the CAN message, how the CAN message is also getting changed. So for that, I created this um, system variable. I will show you um, edit name slider. I have given the explanation also. I have selected the data uh, type, minimum value, initial value, minimum value, and the maximum value, and the unit also. I have typed that's a percentage. I just hit on OK, apply, OK. So first step is generating the system variable. Now going back to your canalizer that is into the measurement setup and the capital programming. So I will open the capital programming. And the third step is this step. What I'm going to do on system variable, I already created the system variable name slider. I have to create one message, the message which I want to modify into the network. If you see here, earlier I said the DLC 8, uh, 1 in the earlier message, I'm setting DLC 8 as per your need. If you want to set 4, 3, as you wish, you can set. I just set the 4 DLC here. And I want to send that on the CAN channel one. Then this is what I explained. This is um, basically keyword. And if you want to receive a CAN object or an AI environment variable, um, <coughs> you need to use the data structure of the object uh, to receive and interact with your environment variables. So this is the keyboard. And this is how you can write this is the syntax and I'm just outputting that very simple. So this is our second step. Follow my step and now let's compile. If no error is there, everything is OK, no warning. Just save it and go back to your uh, panel designer. Now again, I will jump to my panel. So I will come here, here and I will go to my um, editor. So here is my editor. So what I will do, I already have created this to save the time. I, if you see here, I set uh, the background color blue. I, I have set um, the minimum value, maximum value. And in the symbol, if you come here, I just, instead of selecting the signal, I selected the variable. And what is the variable? I just created that variable. I selected that variable. The name of the variable is a slider, right? Apply here save this. So instead of saving, what I will do, I will copy this, come here. I don't want to make this act. I want to show everything in the single panel in the panel two. That's what I'm copying that and coming here. If you want to just show here, you can save this panel. This panel will be active uh, into the measurement uh, configuration. So then I will save this panel. Again, I will check. I double click on this, come to the property. Is everything right? Minimum value, maximum value, slider. Yes, slider is a system variable. I have selected the symbol filter is a variable. That's it. Rest things are very simple. General properties, the layout, appearance. It's very, very simple. You see, if I change the position, this, this location also changed automatically. You see, say 100 earlier was something and now it is changed 680. It's very simple. So I set the initial value and the maximum value as the minimum and maximum. I will save this and what I will do? I will again go back to my measurement setup. Here you see this panel was active and I saved, so slider is here. Now what I will do, I will hit run. Instead of hitting here, I can hit here. Now you see everything is active now. I can send, switch my LED, release uh, the button, then the LED will stop. Here I can see my vehicle speed. Now let's see for the slider, okay? I created the message with the value, identifier value as a 300, you see here, it is coming here, right? If I change, you see only four bytes are visible. The reason is I said the DLC four, earlier it was eight. Now, if you see, if you change the value, here also it is changing, right? And this value is in the hexadecimal, that's what at the zero position you can see a zero, but at the maximum you can see the 64. If I change it to decimal, you see here, 100 is there, right? So at a zero, it is a zero. 
at mid position uh, somewhere around 50, right? And if I go to the um, extreme end, that is 100. So you are able to modify the CAN message into the network as well. So I guess um, I have covered uh, the all aspects of the panel designer. Very simple, how you can create the system variable and how you can make it interactive, how you can write the logic in the capital scripting to make it interactive with the decision and how you can make it glow on off based on your need. And also I read the can message from specific signal from the network assigned to the dial. And I also write the can message to the network. So I have covered all areas. So based on your need, you can create your panel. It's very simple. So I guess this is what I do have for uh, you guys today. So don't forget to click subscribe if you want more technical sessions. If you love this session, then definitely I deserve at least a like. If you are new to my channel, please like, share and subscribe. Share this session with your friend, with your family and your office colleagues. That's all for the today. See you later. Then I will make you learn something new. Bye bye and have a great day ahead.